which is what's that? <coughs> I can get everything down the side. There's the next slide. Tell me next. So I want to get the ones where it shows the highs being built. It's probably further down the list, I think. Space that's required. I use the frame as a mock up to get an idea of how, how wide I should make it. That's that way they have that crawl space all the way around. I kind of made it a little wider than usual so that way the bees can get the little beetles that we all can't stay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, space right around one of that. This is oh. before I put the ends on. So put them going down. Right here. Right there you can see I've got a frame pressed here and it has like a mock-up. Sorry for cool. the picture there. Right the next slide. Right there the frame rest is cut. As you see in the background you see that big machine that that's my shop smith I used to cut the wood with. Right there, you can see they're all resting the way they should be. And there's the finished box right there. You can see how it'll fit nice. It's 45 frames in that box. And at one point, before I put the frames there, my dad stood in it. He said, This is like a coffin. <laughs> it looks like it. And there's the finished boxes right there. Now, these are the inner covers. These are made by 1x12s. I just took each one and punched a hole out. Right here, this is how they fit on there. See that? You got the three plus gap between it and the top of the frame. There's another one right there. Do you have any way, Michael, to keep those from wanting to slide or enter? Or they they, they, they get one roof, roof hole in the place. There's a, there's a telescoping cutter that pulls it down. That's uh, right there. There's a telescope and cover made, just like what you see on a chain frame, but just take it and just stretch it out, and that's it right there. And there's the entrance holes I punched out with the hole saw. It's another one there. Those are big. Yeah. Now, right here, to make sure I get that airspace between the top of the lid and the inner cover, there's put strips of wood on each one of those. Okay. What's the total length of that? It's 65 inches long. 65 inches. It's, it's four high bodies side by side, is what that is. Wow. And there they are right there. Huge. There's a detail of the lid right there. You can see the space the bees can move around. That's cool. There's another detail right there. There's the front right there showing the entrance. So look, I put five on the bottom for them to come and go through, and I got the upper ones for ventilation. I just took a hole saw and punches. And one thing I like about this hole is like this reason to plug them in the morning. You get to put hot bottles, I think soda bottles and stick them in and plug them up. That's a good idea. And there's the legs right there. Later on, I put runners across the bottom. And the bottom right now is screwed up. I've got plans to put hinges on it so I can drop it down so I can clean it out and do maintenance to the uh -huh. spring clean. And you're still putting those up on blocks, or is that a size? Oh, they're up. What's that? you got to put blocks under them. Actually, they're sitting, out, actually sitting those long hive rails I made. Oh, oh so okay. So right now, they're this high. It's perfect working height for me. Oh, cool. That'd be perfect for you. You can bend over. Get one nail. That's neat. There they are. Good See, there's the there's the runners I was talking about right there. That mm -hmm. was some music, but just over here, white weather paint, and then uh, yeah. Now I get this is the fun to get the paint different because I do the different colors because it looks cool, and the other reasons because when they're close together, just like human speeds, they too yeah. can be confused because if you have all the boxes the same, they can confuse and enter the wrong hive. That's called drifting. So yeah, right there. That's just top them. See the pretty colors. Mm -hmm. They look pretty. There they are. I'm just waiting for a good day to transfer them. Maybe I got to end up putting them on the. And there's my high racks. So you're going to have to build another building. <laughs> yeah, see, there's my high racks I was talking about right yeah. there built. That looks good. Great job. And there's a close up of one of the blue one, the blue one right there. Now we're going to show you what the honeybee car looks like inside of the horizontal hive and how they're arranged. All the way up. Okay. Right here, just. 
on the outside right here, you got honey, and you can see because the box is deeper than the frame as you can see, it built cone along. That's mm. good. There's two good things about that. It gives more storage, and if you want to control mites, this drudge is sliced it off like they're caps. Right there, you see that? Wow. See the bullets? Still? The bullets? Yeah. It's like bullets. I think it's kind of neat how they do that. The same thing, too. Uh, I, the one time I threw a whole bunch of this away out in the woods. Can't you now, use what, it for what's another? Your, what's the benefit of what? You said I cut them off because of what? Yeah, Lights. control for royal mites. Now, this right how, here. How does that, how does that do that? I mean, well, because they're inside those drone cells and you can cut them off and throw them away and they die. Instead of mines. treating it with yeah. chemicals. Now, this here is what I like to see right here. You see it's pretty proud. This is the kind of queen of beekeepers you're proud of right here. There's a piece of the other stuff, the way it looks, and you can see you're getting less honey right there. And this is interesting because right here, they actually built cells on top of cow cells and honey already. Mm -hmm. But if it's worker bird, like right here, I'll leave it on there. I'm not going to cut that off. I'm going to leave that there. There's another one you can see right here. You can see the pollen band right here on the top. Well, if you leave that on, how are you going to extract that? I think that's, that's the birdie album. If it's honey, I just take it. If it's honey, I just cut it off and crush the string. There's oh, more right there's there's the brood okay. channel. Oh, yeah. okay. There, I'm a little another. confused there for a minute. <laughs> What's really key here is sometimes they'll do that single load of comb going across the bottom. Wow. They just have to curve out the straight mount. It's great. This is getting towards the, the front right there. You see there's less brood, there's more food right there. That's the, that's the very frontmost frame here in the entrance. There's no brood, but there's a lot of honey and pollen in there. This is what it looks like from above right here. And right here in the front, to make it easy to ventilate, I don't have the frame all the way against there because if you do, the bees will dish it out right there. Yeah, block it. They'll dish it out so that does allow them to have a gap like this wide, unless it makes it easy for the bees to ventilate the hive. Now, did you groove that board for your frames to sit down in, or is it just sitting on top? Oh, uh, actually, it's, it's a rabbit, it's a frame press I cut using the shops. Okay. I ripped it like this, and I yeah. turned around and ripped it the other way. And oh, the okay. Smith. Here's how the lid's going right there. See that? And you can see the airspace. And the, if I want to feed them, all I got to do is put a couple hive bodies on top of those and put mm -hmm. the feeders in there and put the lid on top like that. Huh. Now this is cool here. There's a quadruple little comb on the bottom right That's there. Pretty. Looks like you see nature. I think it's beautiful. It is. And here's another other hive. You can see this one here is one I've been feeding sugar. They're kind of slow, but they're they're they're, they're picking big. up fast. This is some big bees. And as you can see, this one here, they too got a nice brood pattern. This one. Look at that. It's like it looks like an eye right there in a way. <laughs> That right there, I put that one in a couple days ago, and although you can't see there's eggs and young larvae in this cone. Now this is another, and you see these different colored palms in there, it looks so cool. There's more palms, let's get near the end of the hive right there. Okay, here, here I am talking about that gap, see that? Wow. Nice fruit. Here's what I was telling you about that gap back in. See that? That makes it easy for the bees to bend on the mm -hmm. hive. Now, for fun, I'll throw some top bar hives in here now. <laughs> this is a cutout I did back in 2014. Some of you who come to my house remember this one here. That's why the cone looks funny. This here's another one. This is a split made last year. Never really certainly pick up, too. There's another one. That's probably the last slide. Oh, there it is. Nice bird building up. Mm -hmm. There's a little mold there, but they're cleaning that off, though. Includes it right there. Good job. Michael, how many frames are in one box? Which one? The horizontal hives? Yeah. Yeah. Take them all to 45. Uh, 45. 45. And can, yeah, one, can one queen service all that? Yeah. I mean, if, 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 you, get all, I mean, if you get if you get if you artificial give them a lot of space, they will expand it. It helps uh, control swarming too. Wow. That, that whole box. That whole box is not a brood box. Yeah. Because because so, way it is. You uh, determine the size of the brood. Yeah. Cool. Do you, do you put block, block in the winter time or you leave the whole 